There are two strategies to pre-render pages in Next.js, and these strategies depend on the approach we take to fetch the data. If we need to fetch the data at build time because the data required to render the page is available ahead of a user's request, for example, from a headless CMS, we should apply the static generation strategy. If we need to pre-render a page whose data must be fetched at request time, then we need to use server-side rendering. For static site generation, Next.js provides two functions that we can use in our pages, get static props and get static paths. With get static props, we can fetch data at build time and pass that data to our page. With get static paths, we can specify dynamic routes to pre-render based on data, for example, using a post ID or a post title. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of examples on how to use these two functions and how to generate a static website in Next.js. Okay, let's get started by adding a new page to render the data that we have within this array here. So I'm going to create a new folder. This would be shops. And I'm going to create a new file here. This will be index.js. Okay, so here we are going to create our component. This will be shops. And this is going to return the HTML of the page. And this component is going to receive the data that we're going to get by using the get static props function. So first let's export this component, default shops. And now let's work on the get static props function. So this is export const get static props. This is the name that we have to use here. And this can be an async arrow function, for example, like this. And here we need to return the properties. So this is return. And here we need to return a props property with the data that we want to return to our page. So we need to use this name, shop list, and we need to import that shop list from this data file here. So this is import shops. This is the name of the array that we have here. And this is from, and this is data. And here we need to assign this value to the props here. And that's pretty much it for this function. And here for this component, I'm going to create a table and I'm going to use the map function to print each of these shop list items. So this will be shop list dot map. And here I'm going to pass an arrow function. So for each shop, I'm going to access each property and I'm going to print it here. So this will be a new table row. I'm going to assign identifier, basically a key here. And this is shop.id. And for each column of this row, I'm going to print the other properties of the shop. So this will be shop.title. This will be shop.company and shop.location. And I'm going to add a table heading here. And here we're going to have title, company, and location. And this is actually shop list here. That is the name of the property that I receive from this get static props function. Okay, now let's generate the static website. So here we need to run npm run build. And as we can see here, we are using static site generation. And here it says automatically generated that static HTML plus JSON using get static props. 
that is the function that we are using here. And here we can see all the resources that Next.js generated statically for us. And here we can add a new script to export our static website as a bundle and name this export. And basically this is going to run next export. Okay, and now I can use the export command to generate the static website. So this is npm run export. And now if we go here to the out folder, let's open this folder. And if we go to the shops.html page, we're gonna see the table and the data rendered there. And now if we run the server in production mode, npm run start, and we if we refresh here, we're gonna see again the data rendered here. And if we run the server in development mode, this is npm run dev, the data will be rendered at runtime. So if we refresh here, this is going to get the data for each request. Okay, now let's create another page so that we can see how the get static paths function works. So here I'm going to add a new file. We're going to use square brackets and we're going to pass the identifier of the shop to this page. So we're going to show the details for that specific shop. So this is square brackets id.js. Here again, we are going to import the shop array and we're gonna have our component. This will be const shop and we're going to receive the props for this component and we're going to receive a single shop here. And here we're going to render the details of that shop. So we're going to create a div, really simple. And I'm going to add just three paragraphs. And I'm going to render each property of the shop. The title, the company, and the location. Let's export this component, export default shop. And now let's work on our get static paths function and also in our get static props function. Here, this is export const get static paths. This is async. This is an arrow function and we also going to have the get static props function. So this will be get static props. Okay, the get static paths function is going to use the data from the file, actually the identifier of the shops, to generate the static routes. So this is const paths equals shops dot map. And for each shop, we're going to extract the ID and generate a route to each shop. And here we're going to create an arrow function that for each shop is going to create a new route for each identifier. So here we need to return params and we need to return the property that we are going to map that is actually, in this case, is ID. So this is ID and this will be shop.id. This needs to be a string. So here we are using, actually here, we are using numbers. So we need to do shop.id dot to string. And here we need to return an object with the paths and here this is fallback false so if we pass an identifier to this page that is not part of the array it's going to return a 404 page okay and here 
in this get static props function, we are going to receive the params and we are going to extract from the params the identifier of the page that we are going to show. That is going to be actually the identifier of the shop. So this is show ID equals to params dot ID. And here I'm going to use the filter function. So this is const, this is shop list equals to shops dot filter. And I'm going to filter the shop with the ID that I received in the params. So this is shop and this is shop dot ID to string equals to params dot ID. And here again, we need to return an object with the props property. And here we need to use this name. Let's do shop data. And let's assign the first element of this list. So this is shop list at zero. And that's pretty much it for this page. So now let's open a new terminal. And here we're gonna npm run build. And as we can see here, we have our shops page and we have three pages, one for each shop that we have within this array. Let's clean this up. And if I run npm run export, if we go to the out folder, we're gonna see that within this shops folder, we're gonna have three HTML files. We're gonna have the data of each shop within each file. So if I open this folder and if we go to the shops folder and if I enter to the to this file, we're gonna see we have the data for the shop with ID one, the same for the shop with ID two and the same for the shop with ID three. And if we run the server in production mode, this is npm run start. Okay, and now if we go to shops slash one, we're gonna see the data of that shop and the same for the shop with ID two and for the shop with ID three. So that's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching and I see you in the next video. Take care, bye.